I haven't updated my portfolio in almost two years, so today I thought we could do it together. Come along and I'll show you all the tips and tricks to make a really compelling portfolio and the things that are super common mistakes to avoid. Let's jump into my current site and start looking at what I think is already working and what we need to fix. So here's my homepage. The most important thing when you land on the homepage is that you speak to the client rather than talk about yourself. When we set this up last time, we realized that a lot of our clients, they didn't really understand the meaning behind our name. And we thought this way of coloring the words would make it a little bit more clear. Honestly, I don't love it. And I think I'm missing a little bit of our portfolio case studies already up here so that someone who's landing on the page can get a taste for the type of work that we do right away. I quite like the description, but I think that we might need to reword it a little bit to fit our target audience better. So I might switch out the word activist for something that works more with innovation. So it fits our biotech and research customers a bit better. I like that we have testimonials, but I'd like to break them up a bit and add photos of the people maybe that gave the testimonial. And we could even link it to the exact project case studies. So the next few sections I actually quite like and they're quite helpful for guiding the visitor to the right type of service. But Jeremy and I have talked a lot about this section. We do take on projects that are quite different. So some of them are branding projects, some are packaging, some are more, let's say an exhibition with lots of materials for it. But most of our projects that are a little bit different than branding, they tend to come through referrals or from clients we've already done the brand for. And this is how we like to work anyway. So I think what we might want to do is to actually only promote branding on a portfolio. And I think that will make it a lot easier for people who land on the website to just understand what it is that we can help with. We also have this page that we created specifically explaining the branding process and the benefits. And I doubt anyone is finding it right now. I might add this page to the navigation to make it a bit easier to find and maybe merge the sustainability and about page. That's maybe something that we can think about. We also had one of our amazing colleagues, Louise from the copy prescription work on the copy for us a few years ago. And she came up with these terms, brand builders and brand boosters for the add-ons. And this term just makes me so happy. So I'd love to find a way to give that a bit more space. I might also make this button trigger a pop-up form instead of going to the standard contact page to just reduce friction here. And for the rest of the homepage, I like many of the sections that come next, but I just feel like there are too many and maybe a bit too disjointed. I do want to share what we're about, uh, but most of all, I want clients to get in touch. So I think we need to really simplify this part and have a more clear call to action. Now let's have a look at the work page. And this is where we're gonna need to do a bit more heavy lifting. Most of these projects, except for one or two, are two plus years old. So we definitely need to add lots of new projects here. Something I do want to do that I think could make it a little bit more engaging is to have the image actually change to either another image or a video as you hover on top of the thumbnail. And I might also tweak a little bit the sizes of the text just to make it feel a bit more clean. I always want to consider inclusion whenever I'm working on any design. So I don't want the font sizes to be super small. I want it to be legible for lots of different people and I want it to be a high contrast. But I'm just looking at the hierarchy and making sure that the information is clear to understand as well. I definitely also want to work on the individual layouts of the pages themselves, so each case study. So let's jump into one of those and I'll show you what I mean. I did already start experimenting because I like the information that we have, like sharing the challenges, our approach, and then walking the reader through the project and the impacts. But I feel like it's a bit too straight up and down, if that makes sense. I want some more layout that feels a bit gridded. So I started making some changes to have the text in two columns instead. And I also want to make the images have rounded corners because I think it reflects our brand more. And that's how we often present images in our proposals, for example. For Future Forms website, which is our design studio, we work in a program called Webflow. And this is a little bit more customizable and you have a bit more control compared to Kayla's website, for example, that's built on Squarespace. Now, both of these options are great because I don't code. So I want something where I can customize and work on it myself, update things quick and easy. But there's definitely some quite big differences. One of the things that I really like about Webflow is the CMS setup. So for both of our blog and our portfolio case studies, we actually have set up a content management system, meaning that we've basically made a template for how a case study should look. And then as we're creating a new one, we don't have to create that page from scratch. But instead, we can just add in the information in those set fields and that design will populate. 
and that has some really great benefits. So not only does it create this great layout that we've already created and then don't have to do that again, but maybe more importantly, now that I want to make changes to the layout and image styling, I actually just have to do that for one of them and then all of them will get that new design. Before we jump into actually creating a new design, I just want to look briefly at the about page and the sustainability page because these are pages that tell them about us and if we're a good fit. So this is where you really want to make that human connection. Overall, I like the information that's here, but I think we're missing a call to action for both of these pages. We don't just want to share what we're doing, but we also want to connect it to how this benefits the client so that they feel super excited to get in touch. We also have some pretty silly mistakes like this one, for example. It says we've been in business for eight years, we should be nine, which is fine. But then if you look at the text underneath, it says six years. So I just need to go through the pages in general and just make sure that the information is still relevant. Another small thing I wanna do is to work on the footer as well. Overall, the footer is okay, but a lot of the people that come to our website come actually through Pinterest. So they've seen some of our case study images and they click to go visit the case study. Now, I suspect that a lot of the people who come to our website through Pinterest are actually other creatives. And since we bought this YouTube channel, I thought it would be a good opportunity to tell them about the YouTube channel. So I want to make a section in our footer that talks about what to do if you're creative and how you can learn more. On the contact page, we just need to change the photos because we look so young here. I think these are at least four years old, so we definitely have some better ones. Okay, great. So to summarize, here are four things we want to keep in mind when we're designing our portfolio. The first one is to make it about your client. Talk about everything that is relevant to them and how you can help them solve their specific problems. Two is to have really clear calls to action. Make it really easy for someone to get in touch about their project. Three is to make sure that your case studies are really telling the story of the project. Don't just show them the beautiful pictures, but put it in context. And lastly, keep it simple and don't overcomplicate things too much. You want people to get a good idea of what your company offers and how you can help, but then the goal is to get them to take the next step, not stay on your page. So let's get designing. The very first thing I want to look at is actually the names in the menu. And I want to start thinking about the copy as well. Having a really good, strong copy that really connects with your client is going to make all the difference on especially your homepage. So I'm just going to try out lots of different versions here. I like to just make copies and try them out and then keep some of them if I think that they might have a good idea in them. Sometimes I end up putting them on a different artboard just so I can go back to them if I want to. But I really like this idea of exciting results and a very calm process because that's something that a lot of our clients bring up to us. I also want to think about the layout here and so I often go back and forth between the preview and actually designing. I'm working in Adobe XD here so it's very flexible and very easy to just make tweaks and play around and try things out. One of the things that I'm really wanting to experiment with is this initial layout, so how we're actually viewing the portfolio. And I want to try if either we're going to have some sort of carousel or maybe we'll have one project and then you can click to see more. Maybe there's even a way to do like a, a video, for example, like a reel. And I also want to think about the other sections, of course, like the testimonials. But I'm just wanting to exhaust all different options. So I'm also trying out ideas for things like doing a split layout, for example, or maybe having a show reel. And doing a showreel is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but when you're working day to day, it's hard to make the time. So I actually think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a showreel video for you. So we're going to create a showreel together and that way we can actually look at how to create one. I can explain my process and my thinking. And so I'm actually going to put that here now. But when we start building, I'll make space for it and then I'll actually just make it and then pop it in once it's finished after our next video together. I also want to share lots of different previews of projects. And so I want to think about how to do that layout in a way that's going to showcase enough different work that people of different like niches, different uh, industries specifically are going to see what they want but I don't want to show everything. So what I thought was I'll have some featured projects and then I'll also have a little bit more of an overview section. And now we're going to start working on the other sections. And what I've been thinking here is I just really want something that is a lot simpler. 
Right now, I feel like a lot of the sections just have a lot of information and really what I want to get down to is this kind of unique combination of Jeremy having a design background and me having more of an ecological sustainability research background and how we're combining those into something that is a unique offer for our clients. So again, I'm just trying out lots of different text combinations and what we can talk about here. And I'm basically just deciding that we need to have a lot less. So I'll have this one section that's a little bit of a copy about what actually we help with. But then I want to have a little bit of an overview of shots from the studio. And I'm actually going to keep it at that to keep it super simple. I also want to share more about our process. And I think this is something that we want to do already on the homepage. Because one of the things that our clients also bring up is how much they feel calm in the creative process and that everything is so well defined. So I'm thinking that's something we want to share here as well. So I'm trying to think of how much information we need here and what we can do to entice them to click and read more about the actual process now that we're going to have that in the navigation. I think here it could be really good to get a little bit of input from someone who's been a past client about the process specifically. And we have this really lovely quote, so I'm going to put that here as well. And I'm just going to make sure that they, I have consistency in my font sizes and things like that. And finally, I think we're just going to keep it this simple. So that's what we're going to look at for the homepage. So here's a little preview of what that looks like. The final thing actually I decided to add here is I also want a call to action because that's something that we have talked a lot about in this video. And I used some of the copy from our branding page because we really want this to be about getting in touch for branding. Now let's work on the about page. And so here, I really want to get to the bottom of what you get when you work with us as a team. And I want it to be about the client, but I also again want to reiterate a little bit about our sustainability because a lot of companies feel very scared to share the bits that they do because they might think that it's not enough. And I think sharing the things that we actually do and the things that we still have left to work on is something that builds a lot of trust. So I'm going to put things like the different organizations that we're in and the impact that we have. But I also want to make sure that at this stage I'm designing, so I'm not focusing too much on the actual images. I'm focusing more on the layout and what content there should be. So uh, some of the things that you might see here is a lot of repeating photos in the beginning, just because we're trying to figure out the layout and the copywriting first. So now that we're starting to get the layout down for this about page as well, I want to start working on all of the different case studies. And one of the things I want to do for that is prepare mockups. Mockups are such an important part of any project. And I always make sure that I think about how to use mockups that are very applicable for the industry and the client so that it will be something they can really envision using. And all you have to do is just go and copy in your images in the Photoshop layer. What you can also do is adjust the lighting, for example, and the different effects to make sure that it matches other mockups in the same project. And this will really bring a more professional touch. Finally, I've made this template in Adobe Illustrator for all the different images I need for the case studies because they all follow the same format. So I make sure to export them so that the file sizes are not too big because we want to make sure one, that the page loads fast, but also that we're saving energy in terms of environmental impact. And now I can just go into the back of the CMS and I can add in all that information for my case studies, like the text for the different sections and the images of the mockups that we've created. So let's save and have a look at what this could look like. So you'll see that this has auto populated and what I want to make sure here is that I have a good balance of different graphics. So for example, you can see that this image that we had as the second image, I feel like is also very graphical. And I would like a direct application right after this hero image so that people right away can start getting an impression for what this could look like. Okay, great. So I think I feel happy about the design now. So I'm going to hand it over to Jeremy and he's going to actually implement it in Webflow. So let's have a look at what it turns out like. So here's a little preview. One of the things I'm really excited about is I was able to do this hover effect and maybe I'll make a reel so that I can show you how to do it in Webflow if that's something you're interested in. I really like how much simpler it feels and it's just easy to navigate. So this is the new homepage and we even have this little footer link to go right to YouTube. On the work page, I've kept it super simple. This is a CMS link and I've just listed our services and a bit more about us. 
And this is the new about page with a little bit more meat and merging the sustainability and the studio page. We then have the branding page where we have a lot more about how the process works and I'm really happy that I put this up in the navigation because it saved me from having to create a new page and also I think it's going to add a lot of value to the questions that people have. And finally we have the contact page. I hope this gave you lots of inspiration for your own portfolio and if you're a bit curious about Webflow and the CMS specifically, I actually have a video for that so I'll pop that here on the screen and that in the description. If you want to look at the last time that I designed basically the first portfolio that we saw, my old version, I actually documented it here on the channel as well. So I'll make sure to put that on the screen and in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and with your new portfolios.